Well, it really is excellent to be with you here in August 2024. I believe the last time I was here was July of 2023, a year ago, a little more than a year ago. And uh, to be fully transparent, I was hopeful. I was excited. I was scared. And I was still in latter stages of grief from what I was leaving. I mean, this is the uh, situation a year ago. For 25 years, I had been in academia teaching graduate level, which I loved. Professor Mitchell Theology, academic dean. My intention. My hope, my prayer had been to continue in that until I retired. I don't want to say the Lord did not answer that prayer. He answered it pretty clearly with a no. And uh, a year ago, I didn't quite know what I was stepping into as head of school. I'd never... I've uh, been that before. It'd been it'd been 25 years since I'd been in K through 12 uh, education, and uh, a year later, I can I can say now, it it's pretty clear that the Lord's hand was in that transition, and uh, bringing me to Philmont Christian Academy. I'm going to say a little bit about Philmont Christian Academy, then we're going to delve into the scriptures, but. Uh, Philmont Christian Academy, I've learned, I mean, I hoped, I thought, uh, but it actually really is an excellent Christian school. So even now, it's not too late. Uh, we have our orientation day tomorrow, but I mean, I saw the kids up here, and you know when I, what I see when I see these kids? Of course, I see precious little ones in the hand of God, and I also see precious future Philmont students. But anyway, if... Uh, <laughs> if uh, if you are looking for a quality academic, but most importantly, fully Christian K through 12 education, I would urge you to consider Belmont Christian Academy, where every class of every course taught at Philmont is taught by a disciple of Christ. So a Bible believing Christian person skilled in their field and their and their craft, but not just a disciple of Christ, but a discipler of Christ. I mean, they are in it. I mean, our, our ministry, yes, you can call it education, but it's a discipleship ministry. And then, by the blessing of God, if you happen to have someone going into ninth grade, two weeks ago, uh, a, an, an older donor came through set up a, uh, a, a, a trust fund. The trust fund already, already existed. But, but set up a scholarship fund whereby if you have a, a top-performing academic ninth grader going into ninth grade, because we still haven't selected the student, there actually is a full-ride scholarship uh, for such a, uh, a student. So there's only one of them. The rest of them are still a bargain at any price, but but uh, I, I commend Philmont to you. But this morning, I want to share with you a psalm that's meant a lot to me, particularly over the last 10 years. It's a psalm that uh, through some of the darkest days of the last three, four years, I actually endeavored to, uh, to memorize it. But, uh, you know, discipleship in Christ is taking up your cross and following Christ. And part of what I've learned is Jesus is really serious about that, take up your cross. There's cost involved. There are unexpected turns. We're following him, and sometimes he goes in directions that we weren't anticipating and don't want to go. And this psalm has meant 
uh, a lot to me, and I'm still learning. And uh, particularly as I look back over the last year, years, there's even deeper meaning that I think I'll continue to unpack as the days and months go through. So I'm not going to try and plumb the depths fully. Uh, we don't have that much time this morning, but I want to take enough time to look at some of the lessons that, that I've learned, and they might be meaningful to you too, and it's Psalm 37. Now, usually, and I, this is probably the case at Bucksmont Baptist Church too, we'd read the scripture and then I'd comment on it, and then the preacher preaches on it, you know, goes into it. I'm going to do it the opposite way today. I'm going to go through some principles that, well, have resonated with me. I'm going to trust by the Spirit of God, and then I'm going to read it at the end with those principles in mind. Hopefully that'll work. This psalm actually is divided into two parts. They're unequal parts, though. The first quarter of the psalm gives instruction or counsel. And then the final three quarters, and it's a long psalm, the final three quarters is why. So the first quarter is do this. And then the second three quarters is because. So the first quarter, the instructions, the counsel, verses 1 to 6. Do not fret. Do not fret. Some of you are going to say, that sounds like Jesus. <laughs> Don't worry. Yes, I think Jesus read this, this psalm. You know, which one of you is, has added one day of your life by worry? Do not fret. But rather, delight in the Lord, trust in the Lord. So the psalm says both kind of view them both interchangeably, which I'll talk about in a second. Do not fret. Now, the overtones of the Hebrew word. See, I've still got a little bit of seminary professor left in me. The, I'm not going to say the Hebrew means this, the English sounds like this, but the Hebrew means this instead. No, that's it. the Hebrew words mean don't fret, delight, trust in the Lord. But the overtones, fret, the words are simmer, smolder. Some of you know exactly what this is talking about. Simmering, smoldering on some kind of problem, some kind of injustice, some kind of this person ripped. How can they get away with that? Some kind of I did not get what I'm entitled to get. That's fret. Boy, if, if this goes the way this looks like it's going to be going, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm, I'm going to lose out. Don't do that. The words for delight and trust in, the overtones are culinary. Savor, taste. Now, there are psalms that actually say, taste and see that the Lord is good. So, I mean, it's hard to, I didn't know what picture to put with that. I mean, it's, she's dancing, skipping through the field. But there's genuine delight in, enjoy. Next week, you're having a church picnic. I don't know what kind of sides and desserts there are going to be. I'm sure they'll be good. But hot dogs, hamburgers, one of the, one of the rules of homiletic rules of preaching is never talk about food in the sermon. You know, it's just, I've, I've now lost at least half of you by talk, talking about food. But you know what you're going to do with those hamburgers and hot dogs? You're going to savor them. 
you're going to enjoy. That's, that's the overtones of that admonition. And you know what? These are polarities. Like, like a magnet that, that are opposite ends of the poles. If you're doing one, you're not doing the other because they're polarities. So let me ask you, you fretting? You anxious? You, you worried? You know, you churning away on something? I don't need to know anything about the specifics of your situation. But you know what I know? Even without knowing the specifics, you're not delighting in the Lord. You, you, you are not trusting in the Lord. Be, because if, if you were, you wouldn't be fretting and worrying and hand wringing. Delighting in the Lord? Well, that has a way of relieving anxiety. That, that has a way of giving one an even keel and ability to roll with it. Instruction, admonition number two. Rest and wait patiently in the Lord. Now, relax. That, that is an appropriate overtone to gather, but it, it's, it's not like it's from the Greek word couch potato costs, you know. It's, it, it, you know, it's, it's not cease and desist from any and all activity. But it is relax, chill, as you wait patiently. So you can hear this, this is a kind of a next layer to trusting the Lord. This, God, this is a mess. This is not right. This is messed up. Do you not see? I mean, if I think about that, I can get downright upset. I can get downright angry. I can get downright anxious. This psalm says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Now, I love preaching this. I stink at it. Hey, I mean, I do not have the spiritual gift of patience. Actually, that's supposed to be a fruit of the Spirit, I think. Love, joy. Anyway, it's on there somewhere. Peace. Uh, anyway, something. It's, I think it's in there. I think it's in there somewhere. Rest, wait patiently in the Lord, rather than seething in anger. That's in the psalm. That, that's the juxtaposition. Waiting patiently as opposed to seething in anger. Now, I got to tell you, in the transition at uh, Missio Seminary, the acquisition period, there were people seething in anger. I knew a couple of them. Shame on them. Man, it was isn't that just terrible. It was just terrible. Front front row, right here. I'm one of them. And this says, I'm not saying it's all right. I'm not saying this is honky dory just fine. I I'm saying wait. And be patient, it isn't over yet. Now, those are the instructions. Those are the admonitions. What, what, 
Why, why should I do that? Why should we do that? Delight and trust in the Lord rather than being anxious, rather than fretting. Why should we wait patiently and chill out as opposed to seething in anger? Well, part two is the because. Because. Here's verses 12 to 15. Because there is a God in heaven who does look down and not just observe, but sees to it that what goes around comes around in the wicked planning schemers. Now, I... I have to say at Missio Seminary, I don't think there was malice, malevolence, wickedness, you know, per, per se. That, that, that wasn't the issue. But the psalm goes on to include or insinuate, yeah, you know, there are genuinely evil people in the world that sometimes succeed. For a while. For a while. Don't be, don't be distracted. God is still on the throne. Whoever wins the election in November. Ooh, did I just get political? Anyway, God is still on the throne. And Jesus is coming back. I mean, we may have to wait till then. But They may succeed for a while. They may take advantage of you, and you lose out. But it's not like God doesn't see. It doesn't, it's not like God doesn't take into account. There are selfish people. The me first people that butt in front of you. Do you see that? Yes, God says, I do see. There are foolish people. There are stupid people that sometimes impact you negatively. I may have had one or two of them on the way in in traffic. Anyway, but there, there, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, God is on the throne. He loves us in Christ. We know that. Boy, if all that's true, then, then how am I the victim of road rage? How, how did I not get that promotion? How did I get defrauded out of all this? Well, there are wicked people. There are selfish people. There are foolish people. There are stupid people. That is true. But just wait. Just wait. God will see to it that eventually, you may have to wait until the life to come, until the kingdom to come, but eventually, the scales of justice will be righted. Now, I'm sorry, y'all, but I really enjoy that teaching from Scripture. I mean, I do. I Part of what allows me to take delight in the Lord I haven't, I haven't seen him do it all in every case, but I've seen him do enough. And sometimes he's done it on me. That's less enjoyable. But I, I've seen him do enough that you go, man, oh, God, you are in control. You are smart. You, you do have, you are remarkably resourceful. You do have ways of bringing to justice. The Lord takes good care of the humbly faithful so that better is the little of the righteous than the abundance of many wicked. Now, I'm actually quoting from the psalm there. Even if the wicked have more, even still, better a little with the righteous than the abundance of the wicked. Sometimes the wicked prosper. Don't let that be a cause of distraction or envy in you. 
Like, ooh, maybe if I'm wicked with them, maybe I'll get ahead too. Don't do it. Don't do it. Why? Because there's a God in heaven who is watching, who is working his purposes. There are seasons in life in which the steps are hard, even painful. Now, see, we had taken some of those hard, painful steps at Biblical Missio Seminary before 22-23. I thought those steps were behind us. Really did. But there are seasons of life. I thought I'd been through that season of life. I was ready to get to the resurrection and glorification part of the story. But there are steps in which, there are seasons in life in which the steps are hard and painful. And Scripture, God's Word, part of what I love about God's Word is that it's realistic about this and tells the truth. But even then, the steps of the righteous person are established by the Lord. Even if it's two steps forward, one step back. Still a net step forward. Persist in righteousness and justice over the long haul. Because the Lord will prove himself faithful to those who wait on him. Apparently part of what the Lord desires to cultivate in the character of his people. Of, of his children, disciples of Christ bearing fruit of his spirit, is patience. Can I tell you candidly, there was a time in my life when I prayed for patience. I no longer pray for it, not because I don't need it, because honestly, I'm kind of nervous about what the Lord will do to cultivate in me patience. Turns out he does it anyway, whether I pray for it or not. And then recognize that wicked abundance is transient, fleeting. But the salvation of the blamelessly upright is permanent, eternal. So, so don't trade the shallow, superficial, and transient for the permanent, deep, eternal. You know, don't be Esau trading your birthright for a bowl of porridge, even if you're really, really hungry. So Psalm 37. If you want the takeaways, delight in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Now, it turns out that at Philmont Christian Academy, I am the first non-Presbyterian head of school in its 80-plus year history. I'm ordained Southern Baptist, you know, I'm the, uh, so, I mean, that's kind of remarkable, you know, in and of itself, that's something that, uh, I didn't know that till after I got there, but I'm around a lot of Presbyterians these days, and uh, Westminster Confession, Westminster Catechisms are regularly referred to, Westminster Catechism, large or, or shorter catechism. First question is, what is the chief end of man? Is what's, the, what's the main purpose of human beings? Anyone know the answer? Glorify God and enjoy him forever. Did you Google that or did you know it? All right, A plus. See, I still got a little teacher in me. Yes, very good. Glorify God and enjoy him forever. Now, the truth is, 
you're going to glorify God whether you want to or not. I mean, it, it's the enjoy him forever that's the benefit in Christ. Um, but, but part of how God is glorified is in the truths of Psalm 37. That is in manifesting that God is right. God's character is true. The wisdom that God offers is correct. I drive down Cow Path Road these days. It's very difficult. In fact, if, if GPS gives me a, a choice, I'll continue on 309 rather than turn off Cow Path Road. It's worth five minutes for me not to pass the old seminary where, where I worked. I mean, you know, but as I go down Cow Path Road, you pass a series of buildings that were there for years that, that are empty, vacant. I think at one time it was a successful strip mall of some sort. I think there was a laundromat or something, but we knew this at the seminary. What, why are those buildings empty? They could be rented or, and are sold. And here, there's some acrimonious divorce that they're fighting over the property, never was resolved. So there they sit vacant. I don't know the details of what caused the acrimonious divorce, but those empty buildings are kind of a manifestation of this is what happens when marriage goes south and is not grounded in biblical principles, when there's not love for one another, when it degenerates or something. But now I keep going, and now one of those empty buildings, boarded up, still unsold, is the place that I worked for over 20 years. And it kind of stands as a rebuke. Now, the, the story is not all dark, negative. Part of what God did was, in a way, spread us to the four winds, kind of like Acts 8, you know, preaching as, as we go. Um, but, but some of the testimony there, for all to see, is a rebuke of hubris. Rebuke of flirtations with theological compromise? I mean, I don't know. You know, the way, the way I want to tell the story is I was one of the good guys trying to say this, that, but hey, I, I've got to feel that rebuke too. I mean, so part of what I feel is embarrassment. Hey. I've now been head of school of Philmont Christian Academy for one year, 56 days, 10 hours, 55 minutes, and four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. Nah. You know, and the Lord has, has blessed me there. He has. He's, I mean, it's not sunshine and roses every second of every day, but I can say with unblinking eye that I'm thriving at, at Philmont. You know, my first few months there, as things began to go well and get in traction, I could kind of see, okay, all right, see the Lord's hand at work. But Uninvited, unsolicited, unexpected, I would get a flash of grief, anger. God, nabbit, I should be doing this at Missio. That subsided. Another four months, five months, six months. Less frequently. But I'd get a flash, uninvited, unsolicited, of grief, sadness, melancholy. Dad, gummit. I, I could be doing this at Missio. Now, 
I did not get a blinding light flash. I did not hear an audible voice. I did not see a vision. The most I will say is, I got a distinctly clear existential impression in my spirit. Like unto the voice of the Lord saying, Yes, you could have done this at Missio, but I wanted you to do this at Philmont Christian Academy. And if that's true, the whole story makes sense. The Lord took care of me my family through COVID. The Lord took care of us through the transition. I look back and I mean, I, I can be mad to this day at certain people who made this decision, did that, didn't listen when I said, but I can't be mad at the Lord. I, I mean, I can't. When I see how the Lord took care of me and how the Lord was doing his purposes, working his purposes, which now, I mean, I, I, I'd have to be blind or stupid not to see it. All I can say is, man, you are smarter than I thought. You're more resourceful than I thought. Now, I don't know where you are in your story this morning. But maybe Psalm 37 will be of some comfort. Maybe will be instructive for you. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him too. He will take action. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because someone succeeds in carrying out their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked man will be no more. You will look carefully for their place, and they will not be there. But the humble will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with their teeth. But the Lord laughs at them, for he sees their day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy, to slay those who are upright in conduct. Their sword will enter their own heart, and their bows will be broken. Better is the little of the righteous than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord sustains the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their inheritance will be forever. They will not be ashamed in the time of evil, and in the days of famine they will have abundance. But the wicked will perish, and the enemies of the Lord will be like the glory of the pastures. They vanish. They will dissipate like smoke. The wicked borrows and does not pay back, but the righteous is gracious and gives. For those blessed by him will inherit the land, but those cursed by him will be cut off. The steps of a righteous man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he may stumble, he will not fall headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. I've been young, and now I am old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. 
Depart from evil and do good, so you will abide forever. For the Lord loves justice, and he does not forsake his godly ones. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. The wicked spies upon the righteous and seeks to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand or let him be condemned when he is judged. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I've seen a violent, wicked man spreading himself like a luxuriant tree in its native soil. Then he passed away, and lo, he was no more. I sought for him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man. Behold the upright. For the man of peace will have a posterity, but transgressors will be altogether destroyed. The posterity of the wicked will be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father God. We shudder to count ourselves among the righteous. We recognize that any righteousness we enjoy is by and through Christ. Any righteousness we may manifest is your doing by the work of your Holy Spirit in us and through us. That recognized we take comfort and we also take warning from this song. Thank you for its truth. Thank you for being of the reliable character of which this psalm speaks. And so, Lord God, let us rest in you. Let us delight in you, enjoy you even as we wait patiently for you to work troubles, trials, injustices out in your timing, in your wisdom, in Jesus' name.